From Seattle, Washington, it's Mad in the Kitchen Live with me, Madeline Smithberg. Joining me is Chef Glorious Lori Rogers, teaching us to make fried chicken and waffles with sriracha maple syrup. So grab your buttermilk and your waffle iron and let's cook together. Welcome to Mad in the Kitchen Live. Tonight, Lori Rogers, a.k.a. Chef Lorius. I love that so much. The author of Calabama Cooking, Classic and Contemporary Comfort Food, will be teaching us how to make chicken and waffles with sriracha maple syrup. You are welcome. Hi, Lori. Hi, Adam. I'm so excited. I know, I know, I know. This is so amazing. Uh, tell us just a tiny bit about Calabama cooking. It's so wonderful. Well, Calabama cooking is how you get the best of both worlds. I'm a California girl, but my family is from Alabama, and they raised me in the middle of California, but a little bit of Alabama in there. So I love collard greens and fried chicken and sweet potato pies, and I put my own little touch on it. That's the contemporary part, and that's how we get to Calabama. I think it's perfect. I love it. <laughs> I wouldn't change a thing. Also with us tonight is my buddy, my pal, my darling, Marisa Mahoney. She's a key member of Team MITK, which means Team Mad in the Kitchen. Marisa is going to be chatting with you guys at home. I mean you in the shorts and flip-flops throughout the show. Hi, everyone. I'm Marisa, and I am a team member of Mad in the Kitchen. And we have people cooking along with us tonight. Our home chefs tonight are John and Bobby in California. We have Laura in North Carolina and Ken in London, England. They will be cooking along with Madeline and Lori throughout the show and getting to chat with them. But I want to be able to chat with you guys in the comments. So first, I want you guys to guess the weight in pounds of the largest serving of fried chicken ever. The winner or whoever gets closest will get a shout out in next week's episode. Madeline, You'll have to add another one of those thank yous, the very long list of thank yous next week. <laughs> also, That's for sure, yeah. I also found out that there's more chicken on planet Earth than there are people. There's like 7 Holy billion people on planet Earth. I cannot wrap my head around that. That's a lot of chickens. <laughs> that is a lot of chickens, and I find it a little bit ominous. Actually, <laughs> bone chillingly terrifying, and I have an idea for a sci fi movie, which I will pitch next week in Hollywood. So, hello, John and Bobby, my Hi, like Madeline. adopted aunt and uncle. It's so good to see you. I know you guys are wearing blue, though. What happened to the pink? Uh, Ken Jordan is wearing up a little pink. Bit. Ken is wearing pink. Uh, so that really makes me very happy. And I think mixing up is fine. Ken is in London where it is what now? Two in the morning, Ken? Uh, it's one in the morning now. It's one in the morning. Yeah. So what are you yes, complaining so not about? Two. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Laura Seal, who I call LaRua because Sky, my business partner, once wrote a typo in an email and it stuck. Hi, LaRua. Hi, Madeline. Uh, so it's Lori, what are you? Here. I know that's perfect, Lori. What do you <laughs> call your kitchen? You have a wonderful name for it. This is the love lab. This is where <laughs> it all happens. I figure, you know, when you're trying things out in a lab, if it's a love lab, if it doesn't work out, it's okay. I was trying it in love, and if it comes out wonderfully, then what else would you expect from a love lab? There you go. It's perfect. <laughs> so I want to ask the home cooks and also Marisa. Do you have a special name for your kitchen, John and Bobby? I don't know if it's a special name, but whenever I'm in it and supposedly finishing cleaning, she says, turn the kitchen lights off. So I just assume that's <laughs> what the kitchen's called. It's called turn the lights off. I totally understand that. Uh, Ken, do you have a name for your kitchen? Yes, it's um, mine. Doesn't bother. <laughs> Helen, Helen, my wife. Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's my kitchen. 
It's your domain. That's actually the same in my house. And every once in a while, I will allow poor Sam, my husband, to cook. And uh, then I make him clean up, even though when I cook, he cleans up. And that's totally unfair, but it's my kitchen. So I'm right with you there, Ken. Laura, do you have a name for your kitchen? I just call it the kitchen. We can abbreviate it TK, if you like. TK, TK is really catchy, and I love it. TK421, is that your area code that's in deep North cut. Carolina? I no, love but it. Uh, if you know, no. you know. It's May the 4th. If you know, you know. It's May the 4th. May the 4th be with you, which is interesting because our whole control room tonight is actually at Industrial Light and Magic, where Star Wars is produced. Uh, Marisa, do you have a name for your kitchen? Um, yes, I call my kitchen heaven because <laughs> I live at home with my parents and my mom makes me beautiful meals every single night. And after being in college for four years, you best believe I appreciate that. So it's heaven. Shannon, do you have a name for your kitchen? Can you even hear me? No, she can't. Poor Shannon is in the Zoom room, but she's all alone. Uh, so let's get cooking. But before you do, I just want to say one thing, and that is... Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and to all those who celebrate. That's my joke. It's like Hanukkah. Uh, we actually cut the recipe in half for this show, but if you want to do the full recipe, that version is on our website, madinthekitchen.com, or in the video description on my website. Lori, I'm handing the reins to you. Let's make chicken and waffles with sriracha maple syrup. All right, are you guys ready? This is gonna be so delicious. I, I'm in love with chicken and waffles and I love when I get to make it with other people because watching your faces light up when we finish is gonna make my day. All right, mm -hmm. we're gonna start with, here's what we're gonna do, because there's kind of a lot of steps in this, but it, it's not as overwhelming as it sounds. So I'm just gonna tell you up front, we're gonna start by seasoning our chicken. Then we're gonna set our chicken aside to marinate. We're gonna mix up our sriracha maple syrup, get that going. Then we're going to set that aside, mix up our waffle batter, okay? And then we're going to come back and start cooking all of the pieces together, okay? So we're going to go step by step. Let's start with the chicken. Now, we're going to use chicken tenders today, okay? And I'm using chicken tenders because, actually, when you're making chicken and waffles, a lot of times people use pieces, and you can use legs or wings or whatever, but they take longer to cook. You actually can get it done a little quicker if you just use tenders, and it's just... I just like it. It makes me feel good. And if it makes me feel good and it makes me comfortable, that makes it comfort food. So uh, that I is have, the definition of comfort. I'm going to put my gloves on now. I yeah, bought I'm all these gloves. gloves. I bought all these gloves at the beginning of COVID when we didn't know how it was spread. And uh, so now I have them, which is kind of just really cool. Uh, but well, I have I a like lifetime. Sometimes I just touch the chicken regular, but you know, I'm going to be proper and appropriate and use gloves. Now, I want you to see yeah. these tenders. You see the size of these tenders? If, sometimes if you can't buy tenders from the grocery store already sliced up, you can just buy chicken breasts and cut them yourself. And you really want them to be about this size. You see that? Can you see the size of that? You want it to be a such size that you can um, get the coating on it nicely and it can fry, but you don't want it too thick because if it gets too thick, it's going to take a long time and it's harder to make sure it's done and it'll dry out. Okay? So... Yeah, that's just a tip I'm on ready. that. All right, I'm ready. Now, here's our seasoning. You should have your first seasoning mix, which is your chili powder, your cayenne, your salt, and your Cajun seasoning and seasoned pepper. We're going to put this on our chicken. Now, this is a spicy chicken. Take the whole thing, whoop, okay? And we're going to massage and love on our chicken. It's important to love on your food. This is the love lab. But if you don't love on your food right, it can't love you back. <laughs> I love okay. you, chicken! Yes, talk to it, make it feel happy. Now, you see, it's going to have a lot of color on it because we're seasoning it kind of heavy. We are. And the reason is, you know, everybody loves chicken and waffles, but there's some nuances to it. It's very important when you have chicken and waffles that you make the chicken spicy because the waffles are a little sweet and you're going to have the syrup. And if you don't have the chicken spicy enough to balance that out, it's just like a dessert. And there's nowhere for it to go in your mouth. You know what I mean? Okay. So, that's so I want to talk yeah. about spicy food. This is a really divisive topic. And I know we <laughs> live in a world of really divisive topics. So I figured I would just introduce another one. Home cooked <laughs> on a scale yeah. of one to seven. And also, Lori and Marisa, how spicy do you like your food? 
Lori? Actually, I'm like, honestly, about a three or a four. I'm not a super spicy what? person, but I, yeah, I know, but I cook it super spicy and my husband loves it and my mom loves it and everybody that comes here doesn't want to leave. So, you know. There you go. There you go. <laughs> John and Bobby on a scale of one to seven. For me, I'm an 11. I don't know about Bobby. But <laughs> I really like hot food. And I do too. So we're a pair. You're a pair. You guys seem so happy. It's disgusting. Um, Ken Jordan, how spicy on a scale of one to seven do you like your food? Uh, probably about, only about a two or a three, if that. Oh, not, my not, goodness, um, Not heavily in spicy, no. Okay, that's interesting to know. Laura? Is one the least spicy and seven the most yeah. spicy? Yeah, one I'm is the one. least spicy. One and three quarters. Oh my goodness, this is so shocking. I think I'm about a five, but my husband Sam is like a 24. Uh, Marisa, where would you put yourself on this Richter scale of spiciness? I would say I'm about a nine. I love the feeling when like your mouth is about to sizzle off. Like I just, mm, chef kiss. All right, that's okay. I think sometimes the spice overpowers the flavor. And I will yeah. cook like a beautiful meal for Sam and then he will douse it with Tabasco and I get a little insulted. Right, Lori? <laughs> oh, absolutely. You know, but I have to be honest, if you're having just plain fried chicken, hot sauce is a compliment. Yeah, it is. You know, yeah, it is. It's south. just about the amount. It's just about all right. It's about what are we doing about? next? Okay, so now next? you see how this chicken is all nice and, and seasoned up. You see that it should have this pretty color to it. It should no longer look pale and boring. Your chicken should look nice and colorful. So what we're gonna okay. do is get ready to put our buttermilk season, our buttermilk, the batter sticking to it on it, okay? We're gonna Guys, take here. You. You've got a cup of buttermilk. Okay, okay cup of buttermilk. Cup, cup of, of buttermilk. buttermilk you got, and you got your egg. Now, Laura, buttermilk. Egg. Everybody's got we're their cheating. egg. We're cheating. Oh. You're cheating, no cheating. Oh, Who's but I cheating? have to. Bobby. This is Bobby. Bobby. I'm I'm using almond milk with a little lemon juice because we don't eat dairy. And we don't eat is... dairy. <laughs> but you well, know, not when she's perfect... watching me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's how you make your own buttermilk, though, at home. I mean, even if you if you can't find it in your store, you can just take one cup of milk and add a tablespoon of acid to it. Acid being lemon juice or white vinegar. Let it sit for a few minutes and it'll turn into buttermilk. And it works so what perfectly. Should she do, I made cake What with should that. she do with her almond milk to make it buttermilk worthy? I would say add two eggs though, just to make sure you get a little more fat in there and thicken it up. Good idea. Two eggs. That's a great just idea. Okay, sure. so I've got my egg and my buttermilk. What am I putting in next? Now you see how I took my egg and I just lightly am breaking that yolk up. Okay, I'm gonna add it to my buttermilk. The next thing we're gonna do is take our hot sauce. And yes, we are putting, I told you, a lot of heat on purpose in this because we want this to be nice and hot. Pour that hot sauce in there. And this is gonna create layers of flavor. We want every piece of this chicken to have that flavor. Now you're gonna whisk together or mix together the buttermilk with the egg and the hot sauce. And you see, it should start to have this kind of salmony color. I like to call it salmon. Yeah. I don't know if that's really a word, but it is today. No, I think <laughs> it is, especially here in the Pacific Northwest, where we just are obsessed with our salmon in it's every salmon way. <laughs> so, salmon we're like. You got, your, <laughs> you got your hot sauce. Now, for those of you who don't want to make it too hot, go a little farther than you, when you go as far as you think you should go. I'm going to say go a little bit further, but don't go as quite as far probably as I went. <laughs> Okay. I went the whole, I the, I whole went the whole way. I did the whole hot too. sauce. Yep, I did. <laughs> All right. Now you're going to take this, this mixture and pour it on the chicken. And what this is going right. to do is coat our chicken. And this is going to help the flour batter stick to the chicken when we get to it. So I've poured the buttermilk on here. And I'm just taking a fork or something just simple to mix it around to make sure that all of the chicken, all of the pieces and crevices are covered. Now in a perfect now, world- Now, Lori, Lori, yeah. could we eat it just like this? I would not advise that. That could cause <laughs> a lawsuit for you and me both. <laughs> you should not eat look, it like this. <laughs> it does look very good. 
Yeah. And what you want to do, if, if you have time and you actually are a planner, like I sometimes am, I start this earlier in the day or the night before, and you can actually soak the chicken in the buttermilk overnight. But who has time for that, right? So we're going to cheat the system, let it soak while we do our syrup and while we get our waffles ready. Okay. So here's Perfect. our salmon and chicken. Everybody got salmon and chicken in a bowl? Oh, yeah. Yes, we do. Do you guys have All it? Right. Ken Jordan. Let's see everybody's yes. salmon and chicken in a bowl. Salmon and chicken uh, in a bowl. Bobby. Bobby, where's your salmon and chicken in a bowl? John. <laughs> right there. Yeah. Yours doesn't look salmon-y. I think that's the almond milk thing. Uh, uh, La Rua's looks pretty good, but not a lot of, I, of salmon because she didn't use a lot of the hot sauce. I, but I did use some. Thank you very you much. You did use some. Okay. Your These school. salmons are California salmons. They have a tan. <laughs> hey, Marisa, uh, I need to know how, I just, I'm so curious. I want to know how large was the largest serving of fried chicken? Okay. So we have a few guesses in and the largest serving of fried chicken ever was 3,675 pounds. And that was in what? Japan in 2019. It beat a world record. Um, it was pretty crazy. And I love that the person that got the closest said 850 pounds. And that was my brother. <laughs> that was my so brother, that... Kellen. So we have to give him a shout out next episode. Oh, we will be giving him a shout out. But he didn't even come close. That is a lot of fried chicken, Lori, don't you think? It is. I wonder, did that mess up the whole chicken population with the human population situation? Like, was right. it out of balance <laughs> for a minute? <laughs> oh, there you go. Like, I really now I'm going to go to bed every night scared about the chickens taking over. All right. What do I we do next? Your movie. No, it, it sounds like oh. a movie. You should be. We'll be. Let's pitch it. Um, yeah, I'm all right, with so you. This, now, this is right. always an opportunity. Always an opportunity. <laughs> so now this uh, salmony chicken mix goes away and just soaks right we're gonna sit and let it soak okay now we're gonna start on our sriracha maple syrup the first thing we're I'm gonna taking do my gloves is off oh yeah take your gloves off you don't need your gloves we'll get another pair of gloves later but right now you don't need gloves when we're making the syrup the first thing we're gonna do is mix together our brown sugar and water and bring it to a slight boil over the heat this time that it's over the heat is going to help it thicken up Okay, and we want to make sure that all of the brown sugar dissolves. We'll add the sriracha and the maple later. But for now, we want to start with just add your brown sugar. And you just want to use equal parts, right? So I'm using a cup of brown sugar and a cup of water. But all you want is equal. So if you say, oh, no, I love syrup, then you feel free to use two cups of brown sugar and two cups of water. It's up to you, okay? And you want to give this a stir. And we're going to let this sugar dissolve. So we're gonna put this on about a medium heat. We do want it to get to a little bit of a bubble, okay? But not a rapid boil, we want it to simmer, okay? We want it to just sit there and just get comfortable, you know, and just, just you know, be together, be with itself and let the brown sugar kiss on the water and, you know, just let everything simmer. happen. Yes, see there? Simmer, and, you, know, you beautiful <laughs> thing. You can't yell always... at it, Madeline. No, no, no. That's yell. just my normal. That's my normal speaking voice. It's just really dis oh, okay. disruptive. But I think you're <laughs> like me. I always talk to my food, and yeah. most people think I'm crazy, but I just can't help it. I can't either. I find it tastes better when I talk to it. When I don't talk to it, I don't like the way it tastes. I think it's mad and has something against me. So I'm like, "Hello, baby. How you doing? It's your cute self." Exactly. So just bring that I go. I always go, all right, little pasta, get into the jacuzzi. And like not really telling them that it's a scalding, boiling pan. Uh, I have a question, if this okay. is a good time for that, which is really, I'm very curious because I know what mine is, but I want to know what is your favorite thing to cook? <coughs> shrimp and grits. What I grits. love making shrimp and grits. I just, I mean, I've loved grits since I was a little girl and I love shrimp and you put the two together. And because I'm from California, I make mine with the red wine sauce. And of course you do. Of course you I, know, I kind of it. the Alabama, California cow is amazing because you get all the fresh produce and the yeah. wine of California. Uh, John and Bobby, what is your favorite thing to cook? I love to cook better butter chicken. Yum, what is it, that? 
Well, it's a combination. It's an Indian dish, but I sort of better butter chicken. And it's a combination of tomato paste and spices. And I use almond milk. And then I let it all simmer together. And it's really good. <laughs> John it sounds it. delicious. I know that John didn't have any choice but to say that because if not, you were going to kick him with your right leg. Uh, Ken Jordan, what is your favorite thing to cook? Is um, this bread, nut bread that I make. It takes an hour from preparation to, to coming out of the oven. It's, um, yeah, so whenever we need bread, I'm just making my own. Delicious. Yum. Does it, did you eat that with cream cheese? Do you guys have cream cheese? Needs it with anything, che cream cheese or jam. It's delicious. Ooh, it sounds mm. absolutely delicious. Uh, Laura, what's your favorite thing to cook? My favorite thing is anything with you, Madeline. Oh, oh, wait, here's that $20 I promised you. Um, uh, Marisa, what's your favorite thing to cook? My answer is kind of similar to Laura's, but <laughs> working, no, 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 working with Madeline, I get to eat all of her amazing food after we shoot. And so learning all of the new recipes is my favorite, but the rigatoni and zucchini pasta is absolutely amazing. It's, I invented that as far as I know, and it really is the I've perfect. made it like seven times, literally. I know. Like, and and you, also, so good. you also did the eggs, the world's best eggs on the bed of the spinach. And you did yes. my uh, my mango avocado tower with salon. Those two, those two haven't been posted on our channel yet, but they're coming soon. They're coming soon. All right, let's keep going. This is so much fun. All right, uh, what it's we waffle do? time. So what you're gonna Let's do is leave this on the heat, okay? So this can continue simmering away and talk nicely to it unless you just talk like Madeline talks to your syrup. I corrected myself. <laughs> what we're gonna also do while we start mixing our, waff our waffle batter up is start heating your oil. So you should have a stock pot is what I recommend for our oil and we're gonna fill it with peanut oil. Now I have my pot filled about halfway with peanut oil. The reason I use a stock pot is because I wanna get the, uh, the concept of deep frying my chicken, but I don't wanna use a deep fryer. So my mama taught me to use the Bama part, a stock pot. You want enough oil that when you put the chicken in it, it will be submerged. And also when the chicken is done, it will float. So it's a little, kind of gives you a little edge to know when it's done, because sometimes it's hard to know when chicken's done. So by using enough oil for it to submerge in, it will float when it's done. So I'm going to start heating if my oil. I'm using a thermometer to get it to about 325 degrees or so. If you don't have a thermometer, that's okay. We're going to just take a little pinch of flour and put it in there and see if it sizzles, and then it'll be ready. All right? So I start heating I your oil. Lori, I love a good hack because not everybody has a thermometer, uh, yeah. And I had a candy thermometer, but I cannot find it, and I've torn my kitchen apart. Uh, so just knowing that I can just put a little bit of the batter in, and then you see the bubbles, it's pretty great to know. All right, let's yeah, make our batter. Pretty... Okay, so here you've got your butter milk. Again. What? I'm cheating. I'm a cheater, I'm cheating. Bobby. What What are you doing, I know, Bobby? But when we, when you guys said we we're gonna make buttermilk. I found a mix that had been here for hundreds of years. Well, I don't know, maybe a couple of years in my cabinet. So I'm cheating with that. I okay. think you got to be careful. There aren't any pantry pests in there because I once had a very mm -hmm. big problem with it. And no, I it's okay. It an old box of waffle mix. Uh, but you get so Lori, for reals, you could use store-bought yeah. waffles. Yes, uh, you absolutely. know, and if you don't have a waffle iron, could you use pancakes? You can. The thing, the difference is, and I'll show you as we mix our batter up, pancake batter is a little bit thinner than waffle batter, but it's basically the same stuff, but you absolutely can just do pancakes or do store-bought waffles. But you know, I've got it. The Bama Emmy has to teach you to make it from scratch now. Oh, I want to learn how to make it to scratch, but I just had one question. Is that, can I substitute a green salad for the waffles? No. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> We can, your, we your, can create a fried your chicken. Your Cali side, your Cali side was like, I, I think she's got a point. But the Bama <laughs> side was like, you be quiet, lady. <laughs> 
So I'm gonna whisk up my egg here. I'm gonna break these yolks up, okay? And I'm gonna mix the egg in with the buttermilk, okay? Putting my wet ingredients together. And I wanna give this a nice mix. Wanna get these well incorporated. And then we're gonna add our splash of vanilla to this. And again, when you're making waffles, this is what's so cool about making them yourself. You can make any flavor you want. I'm just using some, um, some homemade vanilla extract, but you can add vanilla extract. Oh wait, oh wait, you just played that off like it was a normal <laughs> thing. You make your own vanilla extract? Doesn't everybody? <laughs> no! <laughs> I will show you how to do that. I'm, you know, my viewers on my channel have been wanting me to show how to do that. So I'm going to definitely do that going around the summer because it takes months to get your first batch right. And then you just keep refilling months. it as you go. Well, if you want, this one's been, this has been cooking for a year. And I okay. fill it back up and let it down. I want to, I want to be on that tutorial. I'm going to make gotcha. vanilla with you because I think that's the coolest thing ever. Uh, all rich. right, so I've got okay. my okay. vanilla, my, what do I put in next? Okay, you're gonna set this aside and we're gonna get to our dry ingredients, okay? So here is our flour. To our flour, we're going to add our baking soda, baking powder, and salt. I'm gonna put them straight in. And you, some people tell you to sift to make sure everything's together, but that's just another dish that's difficult to clean. So another kitchen trick, use a whisk. If you don't have a whisk, use a fork. And this will get you the same action as sifting, which is to evenly distribute everything together. And this is really- Am I putting my making. butter in yet? Not yet, we're gonna do it last. Oh! Here's the kiss. That's gonna be the kiss. Okay, okay. I'm, kiss I'm big okay? into kisses. Okay, I just wait. Kisses. I got a good one for you. Now you're gonna add your sugar into your mix. Remember, waffles are sweet, right? And that's they what makes this be. recipe good. Now, if you wanted to make cinnamon, cinnamon waffles, this would be a great time to add a teaspoon or a tablespoon of cinnamon. Or you could use cloves in here, anything. Someone talked about pumpkin spice once. That would work too. Any of those things would work perfectly in your in the waffle. Waffles. Yeah, that's how you flavor it. And if you didn't want to use vanilla, you could use coconut. You could use, um, I've used- I was thinking uh, almond. I was thinking almond. That works too. Whatever you want to put in there, in that flavoring, you can use. You can even put lemon in there. It'd be a little adventure. Ooh, a little delicate lemon scent would be really good with the chicken. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is take our wet ingredients here. We're going to add it in here to our dry. Is it okay. okay if I do it the opposite because my wet is in a bigger bowl? No, you will ruin everything, Matt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I always That's do, fine. Lori. I always do. <laughs> it's my signature move. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to combine these together. I kind of and love and hate you in this moment, but it's all good. <laughs> good. <laughs> You'll love me when you try this finish tasting these chicken and waffles. Oh. I know that. I'm gonna. Yeah, I want to know from the audience: Do you guys prefer pancakes, waffles, or French toast? Because these all kind of go into the same category here. So I want to know from the audience: What do you guys like the best? Let me know. So wait, I want to know, uh, 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 John and Bobby: Waffles, pancakes, French toast. Waffles. Waffles for Bobby. Waffles. But to me it's pancakes because there's a place here in Monterey that makes pancakes the size of hubcaps with chocolate in it. Can't be. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Lori, what do you choose between that group? I like French toast. I know, me I too. love I having really some do. good French toast. Uh, La Rua, what do you say? Pancakes, I say pancakes. Waffles, They're French easy. Toast. You can add a lot of things to them. Um, Chocolate uh, chip can? pancakes. Um, Ken, it's pancakes you... for me because I make my own. So pancakes. Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, so delicious. Pancakes is one of those things that is super simple but really easy to mess up. Marisa, what do you like of that group? Well, it's funny. Ken says he likes them when he makes it. For me, I only like pancakes when I don't make them <laughs> because when I go out to like the best cafe, cafe, they're like the best pancakes ever. They're super thin. They're buttermilk. They're amazing. But when I try to make them at home, I can't accomplish it. But pancakes, I feel like I feel out. like when you're making pancakes, the first two rounds are just throw them away because they don't really get yeah. good until like the third Definitely. round. 
And you, you know always what know which really, ones. You know what makes a really good pancake when you're when you're cooking it? Add a little bit of oil, like a canola oil down there, and you get those nice crisp edges. That's what I want. See, you're the queen of the tip that changes everything. I love that about you. All right. I'm just now I don't want to over I don't want to yeah. over whisk my batter, right? Yeah. Waffles are a little bit, that's why the waffles are a little denser. You want this to be like I said, a little lumpy, okay? Lumps are good in this case, okay? So we're gonna now take our softened butter. My butter was super soft earlier, but it's okay if it's not melted. And I'm gonna add it in. This is how we're gonna kiss the waffles, okay? See there? Mm -hmm. mwah. Mwah, mwah. And they will like it. They will love do. it. They will be Hello, so happy. Hello, little waffles. I'm not yelling at you. <laughs> And then we're yeah, going to get that to myself. <laughs> oh, this is going to, this looks good already. It smells good. Mine looks really good. I'm very gently, proud of this. Gently mix this in. Don't over mix it. Just get everything incorporated. Okay. Yes. All I, right. I, so uh, I would like My to see Jordan's there. lumps. What? What about you, the lumps? Let me, see your, let me see your lumps, Bobby and John. I got and I mean the ones. I mean the ones in the bowl. Get your hands out of there! Oh, <laughs> hey, if I wasn't kissing the the uh, bowl, can I kiss the bowl spinner? You absolutely can, because it's Mother's Day. You better be doing something really special for her tomorrow. Uh, Ken Jordan, let me see your lumps. Beautiful lumps. Look at his setup. This is just like oh, yeah. incredible. That's beautiful, uh, Larua. Or Laura. Mm -hmm. I, we, I may have overmixed a tad, but there's still some lumps in there. I think we're good. I think you're right. going to be okay. I think we're going to pull it I out. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I bought a waffle iron uh, just for this show. Is there a camera we can see it on? Here it is. It's right here. Uh, and I would like to know from everybody, including Lori, uh, mm -hmm. What is your the, your favorite toy in your kitchen? You can go get it. You can find it. What do you like, Lori? What's your favorite? Like, if you had to have one, what would it be? If I had to have one a toy, like a small appliance or utensil? Yeah, anything. Small appliance. I would want my air fryer. You can do okay. anything with an air fryer. I think I have like four or five of them. I think I've become a collector. I think you've become a hoarder, uh, but yeah, I want air to fryers. Do, next season, I want you to come back and I want to air fry some wings because I, that really oh, yeah. was intriguing to me. Yes. Uh, Ken Jordan, what's your favorite toy in your kitchen? It would have to be my um, Vitamix. Your Vitamix. Uh, I like mine quite yes. a bit too. I love my Vitamix. I know. I have an unhealthy relationship. Mine is called the Bullet. And I pretty much, I take it to the park and we just like relax and sit around and stuff. Uh, LaRua, what's your favorite toy in your kitchen? My Black & Decker mixer has a turbo button that makes that a oh, lot of fun. Oh, yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> a turbo button sounds really fun. Marisa, do you have a favorite toy in your kitchen, which happens to be my uh, extra bedroom? This um, air fryer, no, this uh, air popper, popcorn maker from CNN is my favorite appliance in Madeline's kitchen. So I brought this out. And popcorn was supposed to kind of fly out, but it's not really, so. That's the joy of live TV, but I'm really heavily <laughs> featured in this documentary called The Story of Late Night. And apparently the episode that's on CNN tomorrow night, I make my first appearance and I'm totally nervous that I said things that are gonna ruin my life. So please watch it so you can console me. But they sent me this great. incredible care, care package with an air popper and popcorn and all kinds of toppings and whatever. Uh, so let's keep going. <laughs> that was my little plug for my <laughs> CNN thing. It went perfectly, I think. Oh, I bet it did great. I can't wait to watch it. It's good, it's good. Uh, Bill Carter said I should be a lot more famous than I am. And I'm just like, you tell somebody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now what we're going to do, your um, syrup or your brown sugar and water should be simmering. Okay. Should be a little bit oh, of a bubble. Boiling. Turn it down. You don't need it to boil too fast. We want it to just have a nice simmer. See how mine has a little bubble to it, but it's not overdone. Yep. 
Yeah, okay. mine is like boiling, so I just turned it down. But I think we found this last night in rehearsal when I almost set my kitchen on fire, that my gas that stove is a lot hotter than your yes. electric stove. So everybody in all of these recipes needs to adjust it for their personal uh, stove. Yes. So what we're getting ready to do now is get our chicken battered up. So I want you to get your other bowl with a cup of flour and your seasoning. Okay. Yep. Do I put the and gloves on yet? Almost, Madeline. Almost glove time. I won't. I will I not let you miss time. it. I love and glove you're time. I love glove time. Dump that seasoning in there. And again, we are making this spicy, and we're adding layers so that every piece of the chicken is going to have this flavor. And it's going to be in the meat. It's going to be in the batter. It's going to be on every. Everything's going to have it. Okay. So. Oh you're my take God. This. This is like a symphony of flavors. And then you've got the, yes. the fluffy of the waffle and the sweet of the syrup. This is just like, yes. I think that when I taste this, my head will probably explode. And I hope that we capture that on camera because I think I can post it on uh, as a, a, a shorts on Instagram. Oh, absolutely. That would be like a story and a reel all in one. I'm telling all you, everything. In one. <laughs> All right, so you're going to mix this together. Your flour should look kind of speckled from your seasonings in there. It does. And now what we're gonna, you got speckled flour. That's now we're going to go in and you're going to add these salmon soaked colored chicken <laughs> tenders into the flour. Okay, I'm putting okay. my gloves on. Put those gloves on. I don't want you to miss the glove moment and watch your. I want a drum forget. roll. In season two, I get a drummer. <laughs> yes. I can't Brrr. roll my tongue, so I can't do it for you. <laughs> Everybody got their gloves on? John, Bobby, uh, Ken, yep. Laura. We see you don't up. need any. Shannon's got hers. She's in the Zoom room. Uh, all right, so I'm putting my chicken into the flour, but I'm like, shaking flour. off the excess liquid. Shake off the excess. So when you pick up your chicken tender, okay, shake off the excess. We want the bad, We want this liquid on there, but we don't need too much of it, okay? No, and it then will, we're going to drop it mess up the, the cooking process. Yes, if we get too much in there, it gets hard to get it all coated, and then it can seep off of the chicken and get into the the oil, and we don't want any of that. We don't need we that. We don't want any of that. No. Right, but we do want now, the flour to stick to the liquid. Uh, yes, and the and egg happening. is going to help that. See this? Egg, See how egg helps my it. Hand? You know what else the egg does, Lori? It puts it more do? chickens on the world. That's why there's more <laughs> than them than us. <laughs> because which came first? And if they were all crossing the road at the same time, there would be like accidents. <laughs> I think we would lose that because there's more. We're outnumbered. <laughs> we're outnumbered. I never knew we were outnumbered by chickens. Like I thought of we might things. be I thought we might be outnumbered by mosquitoes. Uh, but yeah. I never knew we were outrun no, numbered by chickens. I actually of love chickens. Things. I think they're very uh, entertaining animals. Now you see how I'm taking my chicken and making sure that it's completely covered in this flour? Yep. You want to do that because that's what's going to give you that nice crispy outside. I want okay? that. Mm -hmm. See that? And make sure you get those how's cracks and crevices. How's, yeah, cracks how's and crevices. Cracks and crevices. How's everybody's chicken looking? I feel like I need more good. power. Yep. Oh, uh, let me see. You just keep working it. If you need to add a little more flour, I've had to do that before. Take another tablespoon and sprinkle it in there. It's okay. There is the flour. Okay. And check your oil, guys. We want to see what your temperature is. It should be just, should be hot by now. Don't let it get too hot, though. That's important. If it gets yeah, too hot, yeah. Last night I almost set off my uh, my smoke detector, <laughs> which and we had a rehearsal. It was a really fun rehearsal, but I almost lit my house on fire. But I'm so showbiz <laughs> that I didn't care as long as it was a good show. <laughs> the ratings on that would be awesome. <laughs> exactly. That's always the way that I think. And it's so sad. Uh, all right. So okay. I, now I'm much happier. I put a little more flour and I think I'm going to get a better result. All right. Uh, how are yours? So. Ken Jordan, let me see your chicken. Ken's looks perfect. Uh, John mm. and Bobby, let's see yours with the almond milk adjustment. Very nice. Laura? 
nice. That looks very flowery. Uh, but Shaking I'm not if you gonna, need to. If you I'm need not going to judge. <laughs> it's too flowery. Just give it a little shake. Okay. So now let me, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take my gloves off. Can I take my gloves off, boss? Yes, you may take your gloves off because we're going to put the chicken in. The da, oil da, in da, da, da. Yes. And you can da. use the tongs, tongs to do that or whatever. Now, if your oil should be hot enough, but if you're not sure or if you don't have a thermometer, you're just going to take thermometer? a little piece of flour like this, okay? And I'm just going to drop it in. And you see how it's That's sizzling back? That's such a good hack. I'm going to take the temperature. What do I want it to be at? Around 325, 330, somewhere in there. Okay. Okay. So here we go. We're going to just put the piece of chicken in first, and then we're going to start I'm not on our ready. Wait, will you wait for me for just a second? Uh, I'm only at 210. I got to turn my flame up. I think I got so okay. scared last night uh, <laughs> that, that I uh, I probably aired. I overcompensated. Uh, Marisa, do we have any answers from the audience on the uh, our pancake waffle? uh french toast conundrum um i got like one person that said they like pancakes more people have been responding to their favorite kitchen tool um, oh. we have ivy says her favorite is a ninja food smart um ricky says a mini chopper and barbara says a mini cuisinart and barbara is also ken's new number one fan oh <laughs> ken Ken, see what happens when Helen goes to sleep? You get, uh, <laughs> you get Shannon, Shannon has a Shannon has a question for Lori. Um, she's asking if you make this again or multiple times, can you reuse the oil? Oh, that's you a really good question. Shouldn't. Actually, you, you really shouldn't. shouldn't. When you're frying chicken, whatever oil you use that first time, you really should just use it that one time because the flavor, the oil gets older, and what you'll find is that your chicken will get darker and darker. It won't be that pretty color you want, it'll get darker. I recommend frying chicken once, but if you do something like french fries or tortillas and you're frying something like that, I will save that oil and use that again for chicken or something later, because it has no flavor to it. But for chicken, I would say just use the oil one time. I think that's really good uh, advice, because also chicken has all kinds of funky things in it, and I don't mean yeah. to say bad things about our future uh, leaders, the chickens, but I don't think you want to play around with that. No, you Chef don't. Lori, I have a question. Okay. I'm using coconut, coconut oil because I mm -hmm. read that it has a similar smoke point to peanut oil. Am I going to have good success with that? You should. You should have good success with that. The key is the high smoke point is what you really want um, because that lets you fry it and not have to deal with so much smoke going off and it gives you a really good way for the oil to get to the temperature you want it at and hold. So you should be okay with coconut. I've never actually fried with coconut oil, deep fry, but I bet you'll be okay. We shall see. So we're could gonna I, see. Lori, I have could a question I, uh, too. Lori, could I use motor oil? I wouldn't advise it, Madeline. <laughs> but if you do I'm just, try I'm it. just vamping I'm still at 247 <laughs> well what we can do while you're getting hot is make sure your waffle irons are ready too so my waffle yeah, iron is yeah. heating and if you want your waffles to be soft right so your waffle iron has got settings on it okay if you want soft waffles then you go towards you know the the first end mine goes from one to six so I have it on about five because I like the little crispness of the waffle, especially once I put the syrup with it and everything. It just kind of makes me happy, <laughs> okay? But set it how you like it, okay? And then I'm gonna give it a spray with some Pam. Now I use Pam spray because it's the easiest thing around, but if you don't have something like this, no need to worry. You can just take a little of the peanut oil that you're using, dip a little paper towel in, and just wipe all around your waffle iron and you'll have no no stick action okay so you don't ever have to feel that you've got to get everything you don't have to buy buttermilk you just need butter and milk and lemon juice you don't have to buy pam just use whatever cooking spray you're using okay? i agree i got this uh this is an avocado oil spray that mm. i got at costco i got like 15 bottles for four dollars and oh, uh, wow. i don't know I, i'm joking but i did get like four and i don't know where to put them 
because uh, I'm running out of storage because my house has become, you know, a TV studio. I'm going to check the temperature <laughs> of my oil. Okay. And while she checks that, guys, what you also want to do, take a look at your bubbling or slightly simmering brown sugar and water concoction. Now, if you wanted to make this a flavored syrup, for example, you could add a splash of rum in. And if you're doing this with for kids, like sometimes when I do this with my kids, I put the rum in early so that the alcohol can burn off. But if it's for adults and you want a little, little kick, you can add little it later. Kick. Rum works, bourbon works, whiskeys work. You can kind of do anything. Get creative and say, what happens if, and try it. I agree Should it with be you thickening? that's such a good attitude. And I sometimes think, uh, like, what about tequila? Tequila would probably Why work not? really well, too. Well, I'm at 276, be, Lori. 277. Should the syrup be thickening? It's going to be a thin syrup. If you want it thicker, okay. you can make a cornstarch slurry, which is where you just take about maybe a quarter cup of water and a teaspoon or so of cornstarch, whisk it together, and then pour it in, and that will thicken it. But that's up to you. I like the thinness of this because it almost acts like a sauce that soaks into the chicken when we take it out. Lori, I'm going to call it. I think my oil is ready. Is everybody's oil ready? I'm the one that has been slowing this whole thing down. But that's because <laughs> last night I almost lit my house on fire, so I was being extra cautious. Bobby and John, how's your oil? Our oil's doing great, but we did avocado great. oil. Ooh, I love how avocado oil. It was great. We love it. It's cooking. It, hear it crackling back there. You know, one there, of the things I like about things like avocado oil and grapeseed oil and coconut oil, the oils that have a higher smoke point, is you actually don't get flavor interference, is what I call it. So when you're sauteing something and you use an avocado oil, you don't get this overwhelming flavor in your asparagus or whatever from it, but it gives you a much higher smoke point. So I've actually become a fan of using grapeseed oil and avocado oils just for everyday cooking and sauteing because they actually do work really well. And Jenna, uh, J uh, JJ, who works with us, was talking about safflower, safflower oil. That's another good one. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think Are I'm we ready? ready. Yep. Okay. You're going to take your chicken. Once again, I want the drum roll. I can't roll my tongue, Madeline. I haven't learned yet. Next season. I probably can't okay. do it by then either. Next but season. You're going to be with me for a long time, lady, because this is so much fun. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna call some. We're gonna make some waves, Madeline. <laughs> I, I, I smell it. I or that yeah. may be the oil burning. I think that's the oil. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're putting in our chicken. Here we go. Now, put your I'm chicken away from you. Okay. You're putting it <laughs> in hot oil. Sorry, little chicken. <laughs> See how I'm taking it and put it away. Don't overcrowd <laughs> your pan. Put about three or four pieces in there at a time. <laughs> overcrowd it. What happens is, well, first of all, when you put the chicken in, the temperature of the oil is going to drop. That's just going to happen, okay? But if you overcrowd it, what will end up happening is you'll have more of a steamed chicken than fried. Now, when you put it in there, that this sounds is disgusting. <laughs> it does. I bet it tastes bad. Don't <laughs> touch the chicken once you get it in there. Okay, I'm putting in four tenders to start with, okay? Do I think not I have touch room. Them. I have room. Okay, do, just do, don't overcrowd, but if you need to do two or three, that's fine. But once you get them in there, don't bother them because you want that crust to develop on them, okay? So we're not gonna interfere with it yet. To help oh, yourself, do, 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 do. to I'm help you resist. Oh, you're talking to mine. Oh, Sorry, I'm talking okay. to mine. Oh, but do, 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 do. oh, little chickens, just think of it as a jacuzzi. Okay, I'm done. You guys done? Are you I wanna make sure y'all yeah. are finished. <laughs> no, no, I just, I'm my, it's in, but yeah, I was talking to it. I told it to just think of it as a jacuzzi because I don't want chickens in general to get angry at me because I think they're going to show up at my house in a gigantic throng of chickens and take back the planet. So that's where I'm going. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, don't touch that chicken in that pot. We're going to let that crust develop. So if you have an urge to just like, I want to touch the chicken, I want to do it. Stop it. Wait, I it's would like to bag. say this to America and England, and uh, we have some people in the Philippines, and this is what I want to say. Don't touch the chicken. <laughs> you got to give it a minute to let that crust form. Let it be like, okay, it's got to acclimate to its new environment. You know what I'm saying? So 
while it's acclimating, get your waffle batter. You're going to put this in to your waffle maker and do as much as your machine wait, requires. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I still have some extra ingredients. I have the maple flavor and the sriracha. Are we waiting on that? Yeah, we're going to do that once we take out the chicken and stuff while it has okay. its minute to okay. calm down. Okay? I'm jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead. I'm so sorry. I've been, I haven't I've been forgotten accused... you. Okay. I've been accused of that my whole life. <laughs> jumping okay. ahead. So here is our waffle mix. And now you can also... Just make sure you're, and let me tell you this, be careful with how, don't overfill your waffle maker. Because we put baking powder in there, it's gonna rise a little bit. And I'm guilty of this. I always overfill this thing and then it pops up and my kids look at me and they're like, really, Ma? Really? But they can't really complain because you're making them chicken and waffles. You should like, see the side eye face I give them. <laughs> I know, exactly. Like, you wanna get in here and do this? There will be no complaints. Oh my God, I hear my chicken boiling, but I'm not going to bother it because I have been Right, cold. now once you get your waffle in, that's enough time. Now you can start to just kind of gently push it around. Don't get aggressive, just gently push it around. See there? Look what I, look what I got. I got this tool just for you, Lori. You uh, got a spider! It, I did. I got a spider. Mm. See, I love my kitchen tools too. This is my new favorite. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to turn mine down a tiny bit. I turned it way up to high to get the temperature up, but now yeah. it's like sort of, it's kind of scaring me. But I'm gonna use <laughs> Don't my let it spider. scare you. Oh, it's now looking I gorgeous. My, I have to say everybody, John and Bobby and Laura and Ken, I don't know how your chicken is looking, but mine is really sexy. We're loving it. We cooked it, Lori, in just a uh -oh, little Uh-oh, 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 I'm smelling smoke. No, but I'm okay. Uh, no, false alarm. Everything's okay. fine in Waffle Town. <laughs> the chicken yes, is pretty Bobby, you what's going to on? it loved on it. Well, we, we cooked it in just a little oil because I'm always watching my weight, and it cooked and got crisp, too. Perfect. All right. So if you really have a problem with the like super deep frying, uh, yeah. you can use less oil and it still works because you've got the beautiful well, batter. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you Laura, start how to are see... you doing? If, now, if you, I hope you can see this. My chicken pieces are starting to float a little bit. Okay, okay that's what you want. Uh, Larua, that's how are you thing. doing? I'm doing well. I overfilled my waffle maker, so I'm staying on my shot of the chicken. Yeah, my, <laughs> no, 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 go to your waffle maker. My waffle maker is overflowing too. It's dripping all over my kitchen, but it smells so good, but it still oh, looks yeah. okay. Uh, Ken Jordan, how is your uh, chicken waffle process happening? Have a look, it's gorgeous, coming out really gorgeous. well. Doesn't everybody's kitchen smell delicious? I wish we were doing this show in smell rama because it really, <laughs> like, the odors and the fragrances are so de delicious. Uh, hey, Lori, do you know a little bit about the origins of fried chicken? I'm just fascinated by it. Yes, and I'm gonna, just so you know, I'm gonna tell you this, because this is really fascinating. If your chicken's ready, go ahead and start taking it out, okay? So I just want you to know, okay. see how mine is floating a little bit? See how pretty that is? Perfect. My, I think I'm my very, very say, dangerously pretty. close. I'm so, dangerously fried close. Chicken, fried chicken comes from Scotland originally. The Scottish are the first ones that we know of who fried chicken in oil. But they did not season it. So I'm, I'm scared to see how it tasted. I, oh, I, God, I that sounds season. horrible. <laughs> it does. Now, fast forward years to slavery in the Africans, the West Africans, that were in Southern America took that same concept of deep frying those chickens, but they added seasonings to it. Which and that's makes how we got the dish. This stuff. The seasoning makes the dish. You gotta admit. The seasoning makes the dish. And that's why I love this is like, oh, this is as American as apple pie. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. Um, I'm turning mine off. It's out. And I'm really <laughs> happy with how it looks. All right, everybody, your chicken ready? Right. My your waffle should be done in a few minutes. If you're gonna fry more chicken, just go ahead and like lower your oil. 
for the person who was asking about reusing the oil right now, like for example, I'm going to turn this oil down, but I'm going to fry some more chicken later. That's not reusing oh, it. It's just the same. Yum. <laughs> All right. I think I feel like my, my waffle may be ready. It'll be, I promise. No, it feels don't good. Worry. It feels we good. have a question in from the audience again. We're wondering if there's any oil or alternatives besides peanut oil to fry your chicken. Yes, you can use canola oil. You can use vegetable oil. Any really any neutral oil will work. I like peanut oil, though, because it has such a nice high smoke point. And you notice I fried this chicken and didn't even have to turn the vent on in my kitchen. That's why no, I, like I know peanut oil. that was you amazing. Know, and it happens so quickly. Yeah, uh, it heats well you know, I, and it comes up well. But if really you need is. to, but sometimes, and I'll honestly, peanut oil is a little costly. So sometimes canola oil, I find, is the next best thing. I like that, the canola next. Yep. All right, so these waffles should be just about done. I think they, they're going to be nice and fluffy inside because of that baking powder we put in there. And as soon as that comes out, we're going to now, let's get over here to our syrup. That's okay, still are we See putting in the bubbling? things? Are we putting in yeah. the things? We're going to put in the things. I want your waffle to get done. Put in the things. Okay, so here's the sriracha. Okay, we're putting I've in the things, John and Bobby. Get ready. Get ready, Laura. Get ready. Get ready. Ken, we're I've putting the here. things in the syrup. I've got three tablespoons of sriracha. Now start with, start, do it like you want it, okay? So for those that don't like things super spicy, First of all, the sriracha is not going to turn this into a hot syrup, okay? That's the first thing. It's not. It's just going to give it a little flavor that complements what's going on with the chicken. So start by adding maybe one or two of your tablespoons, okay? And turn the heat off. My waffle maker is just said it's done. I love when your appliances talk to you like, uh, like you know, hey, my coffee maker goes, it's ready, get over here. And I, exactly. I'm just like, oh, I, 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 I'm brushing my teeth, like, calm down. Look how pretty these waffles are. Oh, mine are gorgeous. Yay! So I bought this just for you, Lori Rogers, and I'm going to use it now all the time. I want to play with so savory good. waffles. I was thinking yes. of putting, like, zucchini and stuff like that in there. You know, Madeline, what's really good? I have this recipe where I call it an everything waffle. And I have, I take scrambled eggs and bacon and cheese and I mix it in the waffle batter and put it all in the machine. Oh my God. Okay, it wait, is, I want my husband to do that for me tomorrow for Mother's Day. It's so, I'm gonna send you the link. I have a video for that, I'm gonna send you the link. That is so delicious. I am so all over this. And I could probably use it as a panini press it would just come out with a pretty pattern on it. Yeah, and you know you can do mac and cheese waffles too. I'm just gonna put that out there. Oh, stop. You just I, stop I, right I lie now. not. I, li okay. I wouldn't lie to you, I'm not that kind of woman. No, I know you're not. You're just pure <laughs> good, like. So I just Lori, put the sriracha in there. Okay, let's come on, back to the sriracha. I added the sriracha. Remember at first I put in a couple of tablespoons and I added it all. I put all the sriracha in here and you're gonna whisk it together. And then you're gonna go with your maple and we're gonna add the maple to it. And it gives you a little bubble. And we don't add the maple. I don't like to add extracts while things are cooking actively because sometimes they can turn bitter, especially vanilla extract. If you boil it while you're making, let's say you were gonna make this as a vanilla syrup. If you put the vanilla in there when you were doing the boiling, it would get bitter. So I always like to wait and add my extracts after the fact, okay? I have a question for you. If my vanilla got bitter, could I yell at it? If your vanilla gets bitter, you should yell, scream, and have a total Thank tantrum. You. I'm just understanding the, you know, how I talk to the food and when, and I'm learning a lot just about food, but also about etiquette of yeah. uh, communication, communication with my ingredients. Now, I'm putting <laughs> a couple of raspberries around the outside just because I feel like a splash of color makes things look pretty. It makes um, the food happy. So we're going to add, take our waffle, happy. plate it up. See, here's my waffle. Now I'm going to take my chicken and I'm telling you, don't get too fancy. Now pile that chicken on there, right on top pile of the Pile that chicken on. My See chicken there, looks it. so amazing. Last night I didn't have enough oil when we did the rehearsal and it was still uh -huh. delicious. But right now I think <laughs> I'm sitting on brilliance. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that looks really good. And then we're going to spread some of this syrup. Now, this is why I make the syrup thin. Again, you can make it thicker if you want it, but I make it thin because 
I'm gonna get some here, okay? And when I put it on, it's gonna soak into that chicken. Oh my See God, that? wait, let's all do our syrup together. Wait, wait, Lori, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. Okay. Is everybody ready to put the syrup on? I see Laura still unloading her. She's got the raspberries. Ken, did you get the raspberry memo? Did it make it across uh, the I've Atlantic got Ocean? I've got the raspberries. raspberries. Too. Bobby, does that look like blueberries on yours? I got blueberries on yours. Beautiful. All right, so we're gonna do Shannon's with us too in the Zoom room, and we're gonna do a countdown. Three, okay. two. One, everybody, syrup. Syrup. Oh, look at that. And you see the little specks, the little specks in the oh, syrup. Oh, almost shiny. Yes, yes. Oh, this looks so good. I mean, I've got, I've got raspberries too. Let me make mine pretty. Hold on. Don't leave me with the ugly you know, plate. No, we could never do that to you. <laughs> that would there be just, that would be injustice. And God knows exactly. there's enough of that going around. We're fixing that wanna... one, one plate at a time. I, I'm going to break, buck the trend. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh, oh my oh. God. I'm on fly when I'm getting my waffle iron, mainly just so I don't give myself a waffle pattern tattoo. So this is what's going to happen. Nobody's okay. allowed to eat yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hold up our finished product to the camera and we're gonna get a group photo and then we'll taste it together afterwards. So hold up your plate and for everyone who cooked along, post a picture of your finished product and tag at Mad in the Kitchen on Instagram with the hashtag Mad in the Kitchen Live. Uh, okay, let's see everybody's finished products. Wow, John and Bobby, that looks gorgeous. Ken, let me see yours. We're going to take a group photo. He's not ready. We're waiting for you, Ken, because we wait for the Brits. That's our thing. Uh, Laura, let me see yours. Oh, that's beautiful. Look what you did with the raspberry. Lori, can I see yours? You hold see it, it up. Uh, hold it closer to the camera. Like, put your arms in front of you. No, keep it tilted down, but push forward. Um, I can't Ken's see working. Ken. Ken, we're waiting for you. Here he comes. Here he comes. We're gonna. When uh, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna say one, two, three, and everyone's gonna yell waffles. Look at Shannon's. I'm dripping. I'm dripping. I'm dripping. Okay, I don't want to be dripping. Ken, are you ready? Okay, we're always waiting for the Brits. Uh, one, two, three, waffles. Oh. Wow, that is really beautiful. Yeah, let's look at Ken's. Let me see yours, Ken. Hold it up to the camera. Hold it up to one of your 17 cameras. Um, oh, oh wow, I think beautiful. that that's beautiful. Waffles. Um, my pancakes are still coming. You're doing but, um, pancakes. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. But You're just delicious. the best, Ken. But look at the design of his, and I love that. I think that the raspberries in oh, London yeah. are like brighter red because uh, we're yeah, always jealous probably. of anybody in Europe. <laughs> All right, let's see John and Bobby's. Oh, very nice. They went with an orange. Uh, I love it. That looks delicious. La Rua, or Laura, as I like to call you. Oh, I love her plating. Laura, that looks matches really, my shirt. And it matches her shirt. She beautiful. Shannon, show us yours. Shannon was alone in the Zoom room, poor thing. Shannon, we're getting you into the home cook room next week. Beautiful, beautiful. It looks like it tastes delicious. One more time, Lori Rogers, let me see yours. Here you go, baby. Oh my God. Uh, this is like, have it on I the think overhead. the fact that this is happening all over the country and all over the world, that we are making this delicious recipe I think we've found sort of the secret to world peace. Let's do it Bingo. through food and start a movement. And Laura, you and I will found it. Uh, oh. Marisa, uh, what do you think in your professional uh, opinion, who of our home cooks uh, pulled it off? Well, I have to say Lori 
Chef Lorias, your plating is absolutely tremendous. It looks amazing. I'm in love. But out of our home chefs, I'd have to say Laura is the winner. Her plating yeah. with those raspberries all the way around. Mm. And it matches her shirt. Yeah, no, all uh, around goes to Laura. Love it. But I would but say raspberries always are a winner. Is, this is not really a <laughs> Everybody's was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Uh, this is really not a competition. We just do it because it's like a fun thing to do. I think everybody here is a winner and we all won because we cooked together and we really use the technology available to us in the most positive ways. Let's go take a bite. Everybody ready to take a bite? I'm going to say one, two, yes. three, taste. But I see that Ken is already eating because now London's ahead of us. So you can't make any conclusions here. But I'm going to take a bite of mine. I'm going to blow it because I've burnt my mouth just a few too many times. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Yeah! Come on! Oh. Mm. Come on. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Mm. And my so favorite utensil is the like tasting this. fork. Mm. What do you think, Ken? So good. Wow. Oh mm. my God, that is just delicious. Maurice is going to come and take a picture of mine, and then we're going to eat it completely. Um, all right, so this is it. Thank you, everybody. What a great show. This was really, really, really fun. I want to say good night to you, anyone who watched. We'll see you back here next Saturday night at 5 p.m., 8 p.m. Eastern. You do the math if you live in between. When cookbook author and food editor for Yankee Magazine, Amy Traverso, teaches me to make Dutch baby pancakes with apples. We're continuing with the comfort food. We're going to be posting the ingredients on socials on Monday and on MadInTheKitchen.com if you want to cook along, which we want you to do. Thank you, Chef Lori, Lori Rogers. That was awesome. Everybody needs to go to Amazon and order a copy of Calabama Cooking. And thank yes. you to our featured home cooks. John, Bobby, Laura, Ken, and here come the thank yous. Uh, there's so many, and I apologize, but I am just overwhelmed. I want to thank Sky Gleason, my business partner, Marisa Mahoney, my angel, JJ McKenna, my guardian angel, Ken Jordan, who built our website as, long, as well as cooking along, Paula Swan, Michelle Bott, Denise Moore, Ava Moore, Julianne Sell, Sam Packard, my husband, Guy Cochran, on the beautiful camera, Alex Lindsay, Shannon Cooper, relegated to the Zoom room, and the crew at Office Hours, Mickey Makachor in the Philippines, Kevin Hansen, Alex Goldner, Andrew Lipnick, Tucker Dragu, Aaron Hughes Lodge, Eric Hall, Nate Hill, John Burke, Tracy. Brennan and Lisa Tucker, and of course, Al Roker at Al Roker Entertainment, Babette Perry, my agent, Barbara Flukapt, AM Northwest, The Today Show, with Hoda and Jenna, The Jason Show, Evening Magazine, Gene Show, and Soma, Silhouette, Salon, and Air Salon, and Lonnie at Suzanne's Hill, Seppo, and my happy birthday. This is very special to me. This woman's name is Jennifer McClendon, and she is my biggest fan, other than Barbara Flukapt. And it's her birthday today, so everybody wish her a happy birthday. I'm sure I'm forgetting 650 people. The outpouring of support for Mad in the Kitchen has been and continues to be mind-blowing. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on social media at Mad in the Kitchen. MadinTheKitchen.com is our beautiful website built by Ken Jordan. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. It's a very, it's every day should be Mother's Day. I will see you next time on Mad in the Kitchen. Thank you, everybody.